Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening for the virtual opening to Elements and Abstractions, uh, the new art exhibition up at the K Meek Art Center, featuring three amazing artists uh, Ellen Bang, Elsa Bluthner, and Nicola Morgan. We have uh, these awesome artists here with us uh, this evening to share with you uh, a little bit about their artwork uh, and everything that goes on uh, behind creating it. My name is Steven Snyder. I am the Gallery and Communications Coordinator for the West Vancouver Community Arts Council. And we have uh, been working in partnership with the KMEEC to program art exhibitions in their two lobbies. Um, and it's been a wonderful experience, a great partnership uh, and a chance to share some amazing artwork uh, with everyone uh, who comes on by to see it. So the KMEEC uh, is a wonderful uh, place. If you haven't been there, definitely check it out. 1700 Mathers Avenue in West Vancouver um, is on the unceded and traditional territories of the Coast Salish peoples, in particular the Squamish Nation, the tsleil Nation, the Musqueam Nation, and the Arts Council is incredibly grateful to our host nations for their stewardship of these lands since time immemorial. And as I said, uh, you can check the exhibit out at the KMEEC. It is open uh, for public viewing uh, Monday through Thursday from noon till 4 p.m. And anytime there is an event happening. So if you want to go check out a show, um, arrive a bit early and check out all of the awesome artwork uh, on the wall. And the show is up um, for quite a while. It just opened last week, so you've still got, uh, still got some time to go see it. So as I said, we have our amazing artists here with us. Um, and we're going to get to chat with them in a little bit. But if you watching have anything you want to say, any questions or comments for them, uh, please drop them in the chat. And we will get to that closer to the end of the evening. So let's meet all of our talented artists. Um, we'll go around and they'll tell you a little bit about themselves. And then we will take a, a quick little tour of the exhibit. And then we'll come back to our artists and they'll talk a little bit more in depth about um, a piece uh, from the exhibition. So let's start off. Let's go, let's go alphabetically. Let's start with Ellen. Ellen, if you could introduce yourself to, uh, to our audience. Oh, uh, Ellen, you're muted. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ellen. Yes, I have a my studio out in Portside Studios in on um, in East Bend. Um, I have been drawing all my life, I guess, since I can remember pencil and watercolor when I was a kid and and uh, go on to uh, oil paint when I was in high school. And, but also done, I'm also working with, with um, sculpture. So I started with ceramics and, and uh, have since worked with the felt, so felted wool, uh, hand felted wool, big sculptures, smaller sculptures, but also painting and painting is what I'm doing these days. Um, I have, I have started with the, with realistic drawings and, and paintings, but it soon turned into abstracts mainly. And I really enjoy, uh, working with, with lines and colors and, and shapes. And that is what my, my paintings are about. They are not uh, trying to be anything but themselves. Um, I, in my, in this series of paintings, I, I was uh, using kind of um, a looping drawing uh, as a starting point and uh, it has developed and, and the, the loops was, uh, done whilst I was singing to myself or humming to myself. And uh, soon found out that rhythm is also part of it because some of the, some of the loops would be small and then go to a longer stretch and, and, and it would all shape, make all these shapes and, and it developed into um, 
more rigid forms as well. And and uh, yeah, just one takes the other. And 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 I I always think of it as having a relationship to uh, to music, but also to to language in the way that you speak language, the the way that different languages have different tunes to them and and you can tweak your own language um like it's a bit like um i don't know mutating or <laughs> whatever you would call it uh and i like sometimes the the idiosyncratic and the uh, the illogic and and playing around with that but yes and then, and then on top of that colors and 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 different different colors different shades i found out when i was very interestingly when i was living in the tropics for some years that that i couldn't use the same colors that i had been using uh in in the subtropics it it's different or in temperate climate and and that was a surprise to me i hadn't i hadn't realized that before that that there could be that influence Okay, I think that's all I'm going to tell <laughs> or say um, for the time being. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. That's great. That was that was lovely. I never would have thought, right? Um, being in a different climate or a different location would obviously have an effect on your artwork, but you don't think about that, right? You're just just you want to work. You want to do your thing. That's cool. I think you're probably going to find, uh, as we go tonight listening to our artists, um, you're going to hear a lot of um, different approaches um, and processes, but I think you'll probably come to realize there are some, some similarities between uh, some, of their, some of their processes and, and how they go about things and why they go about things. So next up is Elsa. Elsa, if you could introduce yourself and tell us all a bit about you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be part of this exhibition. Uh, my name is Elsa Blutner. I'm a visual artist. I've worked uh, in the creative field most of my life. I used to be a costumer, a fashion designer. Uh, I've done illustration, uh, graphic illustration, on a digital illustration. Um, I'm also a sculptor. I work in clay. And... Um, but mostly I've done painting. I started with plein air painting back in 2000. And from that, it evolved into figurative painting. Um, and I've, I've, my style found me and, and I was mostly doing impressionism, um, working in the field, working with live models. And then I started to paint narrative stories, which you'll see on my website if you go have a look. I love the, the um, mystery of what goes through people's minds. And so a lot of my older paintings have a lot of uh, that in them. Uh, currently, I'm working with abstraction uh, and doing abstract paintings. And that came about at the onset of 2019 when we really had a real shift um, in society, <laughs> uh, which had a real impact on my art. And I really only wanted to just paint, but I didn't want to have to think about it. And it's not to say that abstract painting doesn't require any thought, um, but I, I wanted to explore abstraction and show up at my easel and just see what would come. And I have to tell you, there was like this explosion of energy uh, and uh, I was really enjoying the process. And I had a fantastic show last year here on Gabriola, where I live, a beautiful little island across from Nanaimo. And I carried on with that. and. Um, this current series that is now at the at your center at the Skimi Center is is a series of red green paintings. Um, and the reason uh, that I was that I was that I started painting this series is I wanted to challenge myself to paint something that I'm not naturally drawn to. And red and green to me was, ugh. you know, I, I I really wasn't drawn to it. Um, and I, I decided to see what would come of it. Um, I have to say that I, it was a real pleasure working through this series. I'm still working with these colors from time to time. I enjoy them immensely. I've learned a lot about working with a different palette. 
and the impact has just been incredible. So I, um, yeah, that that's what I've been doing. And what else can I tell you? Um, my process. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit. I show up at my easel and I squeeze out my reds and greens. <laughs> And I start with a very uh, a transparent layer of, of um, paint that I apply using rollers and squeegees. Then I will um, apply more opaque layers on top by mixing white and, and more opaque colors into it. And then I will just see what it wants. And I make adjustments based on my knowledge of, of values and composition and that sort of thing. So it's not like just throwing paint on the canvas and hoping for the best. There's actually some thought and experience that goes into um, moving the composition around and, and getting the results that, I, that are pleasing to me. And um, so that's my process. And I will, I will pull layers away. I will melt some away. I use a cold wax medium, which I absolutely love. It has this incredible velvety finish and texture. It creates a beautiful impasto, which is a thick application of paint. And if you get a chance to come and look at these paintings in person, it, they, it, it really is, is a transformative. You will see something that you can't see just on the screen. So I really encourage you to come and have a look. And if you do, I would love to hear what you think. Like, how do these paintings make you feel? That's what uh, being an artist is all about is to to see what kind of, of communication we can have, what kind of engagement, um, what can I impress upon you? And um, so it, it's not just for me that I paint, it's it's for everybody. And, and sometimes it may not do anything for you and sometimes it might just knock your socks off. So anyways, um, yeah, I invite you to come and have a look really. And uh, I'll leave it at that for now. And if you have questions later, I'd be really happy to answer them. Thank you, Stephen, and thank you, everybody. Thank you, Elsa. That was that was a great another great uh, introduction to another great artist. Um, really, really cool to hear about your your journey from all those different kinds of mediums um, and styles into into what you're doing now. Um, and now let's uh, let's meet our final artist this evening, Nicola. If you could please uh, introduce yourself to everybody. Hi, I'm Nicola Morgan, and uh, it's just so interesting to hear Ellen and Elsa's process, and I can relate to a lot of it. Um, <clears throat> what's also I think really interesting and common amongst us all is that we have had a history through a creative process that's led us to the moment that we are at when we're with the work that we're showing at K Meek. So lots of background, lots of exploration. Um, and uh, I started um, as, I mean, I just knew I was going to be an artist when I was a child. So it was what I was going to do for sure. And uh, just moved when I graduated, came over to go to art school. And I went to um, Banff School of Fine Arts and then came to Emily Carr and went through Emily Carr. And um, and from Emily Carr in the 1980s, I guess the early 80s was when Vancouver was getting all hyped up for Expo. It was a big change. And um, <clears throat> I was preparing a show at the uh, Richmond Art Center and um, a disaster happened and the show went up and somebody threw a bomb or a something through the window. It was in a synagogue and all the work was gone. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's, a story that I tell because it was a horrible thing that happened, but it really altered the direction that I went with my art. Because at that point, I knew I had to pull together a show very quickly for the Richmond Art Gallery. And I painted um, just like a devil all day long. And I was also teaching art at Arts Umbrella at the time. So I was always very connected with children's art. And I wrote a children's book at that time. And Canada in the 80s was very generous when it came to children's culture. So we had fantastic children's authors and illustrators, musicians, actors. We had Robert Munch and Rafi and um, Fred Panner, everybody. And then I don't know what happened. The government seemed to pull its plug in the 90s. And so I was a children's author and illustrator for probably 15 years. And um, just because I fell into it because of this accident that happened 
And um, that's where my career ended up going. So I loved it. And I love working with kids. And I think that children's spontaneous approach to their visual world and the involvement that they bring to the process of art making has really, um, really affected the way that I approach artwork. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's what I was doing for a great many years, but always in my mind to find myself as a painter. I was gonna get back to it someday. And, uh, and I did eventually. And um, I have worked in, uh, I would say landscape work and in um, still life work and in abstraction. And um, it has all been um, very intuitively driven um, very expressive work ra rather than having, a, you know, a, a, an expectation of what my work would look like. It is much more expressive and more what a situation or a place or a thing would feel like. And um, I too have worked in oil and cold wax. Um, and that's a process that I've enjoyed because it's brought that whole idea of layers to work and layers are very, very important to me in my work. And I see them in as just anyways, a metaphor of how we approach life and everything in life is built on layers of understanding and depth. And, um, and cold wax is wonderful in that way. It's, it's a medium that speaks, um, I'm sure Elsa will agree, it speaks of history and of, you know, um, transparency, and it's uh, it's it it leads you into the work. Um, and I've worked um, with acrylic work, and I love. I have actually three three I think large maybe two I can't remember two large uh, acrylic pieces at the K Meek, which are spontaneous and childlike and very graffiti like, and they have my own visual language involved in those pieces. And, um, and now I am working in more assemblages and working with monoprints and monotypes and putting um, compositions together and working into my cold wax and oil pieces that way. Um, so that's sort of a little bit about my process and what drives me is now looking, I think COVID has all rearranged all of our thoughts, the way we think about the world, what we're bringing into the world. I have struggled with um, myself as an artist in the last few years only because I was working in very large pieces and I just kept seeing myself producing more stuff, putting more stuff out into the world. And I, I sort of struggled a bit with that. And I was working, I was working at the Griffin Art Projects, Welsh Street Studios here in Vancouver. And we were all, you know, we were all amassing all this work. That was a great problem that we all talked about. Is where are you storing all this work that we're doing? And, you know, you have a show once a year, once every two years. Um, and so I started to just disassemble, disassemble some of my work, rethink of it, where it was going to go. And it actually started when COVID started and we started to think about our homes differently. And we started to think about people that didn't have the privilege of homes and the housing crisis in Vancouver. And I worked on a series called Shelter. And it was, it was breaking up some of my old pieces, working on different constructs of shelters. I had just come back from um, South Africa when the when COVID hit. And so I had looked at different places where people lived in the townships in South Africa and how they were assemblages of materials and things like that. And that led naturally into my work. So I worked on a series of that um, with Covenant House in Vancouver because um, they work with shelter and sheltering young people. And it was a great project. I really enjoyed it. And that led me more into doing assemblages and now doing monotypes. So the work that I have at KMeek right now is a collection of a lot of different work. Um, and I think it's great that I, I struggled with that, having that sort of collection, but I thought, this is actually kind of the first time I've shown since COVID. I think we've all been kind of packed away. So this is it. This is this is what's been going on in my head. And it's all been different, different things. But um, anyways, it's uh, it's great to have the work out there. It's great for me to be out there. As I think we all feel it's wonderful to take the masks off, hang our work up. You know, there we are. We're out there. And that's that's me.
Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Nicola. That was, again, that was, that was wonderful. And to, to hear the journey you've been on, the, the headspace you're in right now, I think a lot of us can relate, especially in, in, in the creative world. You know, what, what do you do with all of this stuff? How, how has everything changed the way you perceive things and how you interpret it and express it through your work? Yeah, I'm sure that's something the rest of our artists can definitely relate to. Um, so just a, a quick reminder to everyone, uh, if you like all that you heard and you're going to like the stuff that you see coming up, um, if you have questions or comments, drop them in the chat and we'll get to that. Uh, so now we're going to take a, a brief uh, tour of the exhibition so uh, you can all get uh, a little taste of, of what's up there. Um, this video is a uh, not going to do justice to these beautiful pieces. You totally have to come in and, and see them in person and, and experience that. Um, I think it was Elsa who said uh, it's transformative when you see it uh, right up in front of your face. Uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty cool collection of, of diverse artwork. So let's, uh, let's pull that up. Oops, so that made it a little too small. There we go. Okay, so when you come in off the Grosvenor, you uh, the Grosvenor Theater, um, sort of the main floor. This is uh, this is what you see. So we start off with uh, some work from Nicola Morgan. Very cool, very textured, very colorful pieces. Yeah, there's a lot happening. <laughs> some some assemblage uh, work that Nicola had been had been speaking of. And from there, we move into some of Ellen, uh, Ellen Bang's work. Again, there's a, there's a great variety. All these, all these different sizes and, and all the different ways Ellen is using line and shape. say in in all three of 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 these artists works there's uh there's always something something new to see some some little detail that maybe you, you didn't see at first so you really have to spend some time with it it's it's very rewarding and then we have uh, another sampling uh we've got some work here from elsa bluthner Yeah, very, very textured work, very dynamic. It's interesting, interesting choices in, in colors uh, that all three of these artists have have chosen. Elsa, obviously, uh, her her whole idea is, is seeing what you can do with red and green, you know, but then you have Ellen with these, these beautiful grays and blues with these pops of reds and yellows on top. And then Nicola seems to have every color under the sun in her work. And then we had space uh, just over here for these two uh, fairly large pieces. Uh, from Nicola. I wonder if these were the two uh, that you were talking about um, in your in your intro. Yeah, those are the two that are acrylic and um, 
very much about just a graffiti kind of language and very yeah. spontaneous. Yeah. So that's on the Grosvenor. And then when you come downstairs to the McE McEwen Theater lobby, um, you get the rest of the artwork. So each artist has been uh, given a wall. Uh, so we've got Elsa right at the stairs, um, Ellen's work um, right across. Sorry for the, the lighting. It didn't really work too well with my camera, um, but looks really great in person. And then, yeah, and then we have uh, Nicola's work um, on the right. So just a, a little taste. Uh, for you to uh, see what's what's there. Um, it's a pretty interesting show, as you can see, uh, lots, of, lots to take in, lots to, to think about, to talk about. Uh, and we're going to do a little bit more talking. Um, each of our artists um, have selected a piece uh, from the exhibit, and we're going to pull it up on screen, and they're going to talk a little bit more about it and tell you a little bit more uh, about what uh, what it was about, uh, what brought them to, uh, to create that as kind of a, a window into uh, their work in this exhibition as a whole. So let's, uh, Ellen, let's start with you again. I'll, I'll pull up your piece. Yes, okay. Um, I was trying to, or as I was, as I was mentioning in, in the introduction, I, I'm working like um, I was starting a painting with with the loops things, and and some of that is still be, behind there. You can see the the rounder shapes, um, but but it's still the same thing with looping around, but um, where the colors that the the shapes that the loops create is not necessarily where the color is um, limited to. So I'm, I'm kind of move, using that in a way that, that the color shapes are moving around um, getting kind of out of their little uh, boundaries. So using the lines for for showing this and, and moving into the more uh, rectangular square um, format. So working with the horizontal uh, vertical uh, thing that, that uh, to me also uh, go back to weaving and, and, and um, maybe even uh, like, what do you call that? Um, basket way making where you, you, you cross, it is a kind of beading, right? Um, but again, it, it's the colors that fill in this. And, and uh, I was working towards getting it in, in a way more simple. But I can see it. It's it looks as though it's it's <laughs> rather the opposite. But from here, I have worked like um, more simple, and and some of the paintings that were shown in um, in the upper gallery there uh, would would show that it, it's is much more restrained. But then that is still the the organic. Um, figures or shapes mostly. Um, but I have moved into more um, uh, I don't know, <laughs> uh, box-like uh, figurations for a while, but I am with newer works uh, going uh, even simpler and and re in reintroducing much more of the uh, organic um, lines into it. Um, but the, the the final point in in this series would be actually the the last one on on the upper floor there the the little one with the with the blue uh, shapes in it, blue and and some um, dark red. 
But this I found was uh, interesting because you can you can follow a line and, and then then it doesn't really follow what um, what's behind it or why. and it, it, the background some of the longer lines will will define the background areas and and then I kind of thought it it had show it had worked itself into two different parts so I was trying to connect them um, just for fun <laughs> I guess with those small lines um, that's in the middle there uh, across a, the light blue areas um, what else to say about it I'm not sure <laughs> it's I'm I never know when I start a painting where it's going and what I, I have. I don't make sketches beforehand, so it is. Uh, it's a work that's happening, that's that's developing as I go, and and this is the result of of this experiment. Yeah, I think that's maybe all I'm going to say about this. Excellent. But if you have questions, yes, do please. Excellent. Thank you, Alan. Thank you for the insight into this into this wonderful piece. I love that idea of trying to to figure it out. You know, follow the lines, follow the path, see what it's saying, but then it it doesn't necessarily go to where you think it might go. And trying to trying to make that up on your own that's that's an interesting journey to present to to your audience. Thank you. I, I was going to ask a question if I could of Ellen. Am I allowed to do that? Oh, Just please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen, I love your work. I, it has um, it's a bit reminiscent of, um, of 60s design, and it's got very sort of um, um, kind of vintage colors that you use. And the one thing that um, that strikes me with your work is your use of value. You've got very strong um, sense of value in your work. And I just wondered um, a little bit about that. And also, I'm also very curious about the fact that you have a history in working in fabric and felting, which is very, they're very sort of organically formed materials. And I'm wondering, are you quite um, influenced by the materials you use? I presume this, these are acrylic paintings. These are acrylics, yes. Yeah, and do you find that, so you're you're quite influenced by your, um, they're quite straight edged and, um, you know, and acrylic is a, is, is, is a medium that I, I mean, I've worked in oil and I've worked in, in acrylic and I find oil is kind of a lot. If I'm working in oil a lot and then I start to work in acrylic, it's like, ah, it stopped. It stopped on me. I, I want it to keep going, you know, so you have to work quickly or over in layers and that sort of thing. So I was just curious if you could talk a little bit about the materials and how that directs your work and um, and how you found moving from sort of fabric work, soft work to this. And I love your work, by the way. It's beautiful. Thank you. Um, I don't, I still think of it as soft in, in the way that um, I always paint on fabric, so on on uh, um, canvas, or if I could, more linen, but mostly canvas. Um, I have been using. Uh, at some point, I was I was applying the paint mainly with a um, palette knife, so just kind of scraping it and and. But um, but now it, it I do use brushes. I make the the lines with the with the edge of a of a palette knife. Um, and but I don't use. I do it freehand, or I, um, I don't use tape. I never done and never intend to do. <laughs> um, and I use a fairly uh, restricted um, palette of, of, of uh, colors. 
I love to mix my own colors um, from, a f from a few. Uh, so my basic colors and, and um, yeah, I don't know whether that was what you were thinking about. Um, are your are your colors when you say you mix your own colors and you work I can see you work within a family of colors do you start the piece by having your palette already laid out or does the piece direct your palette as you're going along the the, the last yeah mm -hmm. good yeah. nice no I um I guess I I I love the blue and that was one of the colors actually that I I could not use the same way in the, in the tropics, in that okay. that kind of light. Um, but yeah, I, I need to maybe challenge myself like Elsa has with the red and, and green because I I like the red. I, I I'm not sure about what to do with the green. I have sometimes it sneaks into my paintings, but but not a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, that would be a challenge for me, maybe to take up. <laughs> um, as um, well about the the more um, rigid forms, I also have a background in in science and then in thinking thinking in a different way maybe but to me it's not that different um some of it is is very much related in my head mm -hmm. um but my newer my newer paintings that that i have shown at gibson's um but i didn't i for this exhibition i chose some that kind of showed a, a development the newer ones um I've gone into some of them calling them poems because that is what they are to me. They're visual poems. And I think I, I that is the direction that, or at least for now, uh, maybe because of, of COVID and all the, the sentiment about being less stressful or less. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I think I'll stop there. I, yeah, I'm. I start to. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that was great. That was, that was awesome. No, thanks for asking the question, Nicola. <laughs> it's interesting that you talk about poems and 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 language in a song, and that's something that I feel connects uh, all of your three, uh, your bodies of work. There's always some sort of idea of. This is saying something. This is this is a line of thought uh, to be followed, um, but not in uh, a super obvious way. You know, nothing's representational here. Everything is is kind of up for you to uh, to figure out and then figure out what that line of music is, what what that piece of dialogue is. That's that's pretty interesting. Yeah, uh, no, it's it's nice. Thank you. Uh, nice words there. Uh, and yes, I, I, there is no intention of anybody get anything specific out of it because we are all different and we all have different um, uh, experiences through life. Um, but always nice if, if it is appreciated, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or understood. We just have a, a little a little comment here uh, from the chat that I think oh, relates to this. And I, I uh, thought I would have my chats over here. I don't. That I can maybe I can. Oh, sorry. This is the, the chat from YouTube. This is from what everyone watching is saying. All our uh, audience. Do Do I live in Gibson's? No, I do not. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that you cannot have a be in a <laughs> part of a, an exhibition at Gibson's. <laughs> Yeah, I, I asked that because I live partly in Gibson's and it's such a strong uh, arts oh, company up okay. there. And I think I, the, I, your work is resonating and I think I saw it at the GPEG up oh, there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool, cool. Well, uh, someone uh, from YouTube, um, Philip 
Uh, Philip says, I feel what you were talking about relating music and rhythm to your painting. That's Thank you. That's good to hear. Because yes, it is rhythm and it is um, breaking rhythm sometimes and, and, and uh, a bit like you would think of jazz where you have a theme and then you have the different participants go on out on, on uh, uh, improvisation and, and that is that is also what painting is kind of or for me at least yeah this Excellent. way of painting mm -hmm. awesome thank you so thank you so next we will um pull up a, a piece um by elsa and have you talk uh, a little bit about this this wonderful uh, this wonderful painting thank you I just want to add one more thing to Ellen's uh, beautiful painting that we were just looking at. Um, on top of the what this uh, Philip said about uh, rhythms, um, I also found, or what I noticed, and it, it uh, created some kind of sensation was the rhythm also of the of the hard lines, the horizontal, vertical, but there's a softness to it. It's in the color. It's in the way it's interrupted. So like jazz music, as you were saying. I, 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 it's, it resonates with me, the, the softness of the roundness with the angular. Yeah, very beautiful. Thank you for, for sharing this work with us and, and speaking about it. I like that we're having these conversations and able to delve a little bit more into what goes into the work and what it's about. So anyways, I will move on and speak about this piece. And I chose this piece because in the red green series, it's a little bit different than um, the others, which are very organic and very nature inspired, if you will. Um, I have a real strong affinity for nature, the magic and, and the mystery of life, you know, how things evolve, how, how a seed can become something so beautiful and so incredible. Uh, you know, we can help it along and we can water it and we can put it out in the sun, but without you know, it, it's got all the information. So these paintings that I've been doing from the three series that I've got ongoing at the moment, um, it's all about the, the, the life force. Um, so this, one of the three series I'm doing is one about sensations. It's, it's creating not feelings, but it's, it's about sensations. And I want to um, use um, structural shapes to see if we can find in it something that, that makes us a little uncomfortable, there's tension. And so this series is called Educing, but I, I borrowed from it into the red and green. And that's what this piece is. It has more of a structural um, element to it. Uh, it's mostly red, there's very little green in it. And it, so, it's, so this, the strength of it is in that, that rich, dark, energetic color. And I used a lot of layers to create a sense of um, depth within the shapes. It, it's not as those things are receding way back and coming close to you, but there's, as you look at the painting up close, you'll notice some, it's, it's kind of like looking at nature when you're sitting down and you're just staring at a little peach, patch of grass, everything's up close and, and personal. But if you just stare at it for a while, you start to see movement and you start to see little critters and, and there's a whole world happening and things are going about their business. We don't even know about it unless we really pay attention. And so this, this work expresses that, that magic, that, that curiosity that I have about life and how things work and, and, and how things evolve. And so this is, why I painted this one and I wanted to share this one with you so you could see the difference between um, this and the other paintings that are in the show, even though they're in the same color family. And you'll also notice there are parts of it that are very, um, still there's an element of that organic life, uh, living object, living thing in it, as well as a structural solid um, 
and weak. It's breaking down. It's cracking. It's um, how does it make you feel? Where is it going? Are we trapped in it? Um, so yeah, it's 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 all of that put together in one painting. <laughs> Anyways, um, I hope you enjoy it, and um, thank you very much for asking about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Elsa. Um, yeah, no, it's fantastic to to see uh, because when when putting up the show, this one did did stand out from the rest of them, you know, because it it is a little less. Um, it's still very organic, as you said, but it has less of that that sort of uh, suggestive, free flowing, energetic, almost plant like. Um, mm -hmm or wind or water like energy that the other pieces have. So I'm really glad to hear, to hear, to hear everything behind this one. It's very interesting. Can, can I ask a question? Please. Because I'll always have a question. You can. <laughs> um, first of all, the, um, the dimensions of this piece. Mm -hmm. It's a 24 by 24. Okay. All right. It's very powerful, Elsa. I like it a lot. I think it's great. And I love what you have to say about the piece. Um, and I also see elements of a landscape in this piece, um, just because of the, you know, the way that you've structured the green and the red going mm -hmm. down. Um, I love the, uh, again, the value and the intensity of, of mm -hmm. what's going on in the color is, is quite dynamic. And, um, and I see all of those elements that you were suggesting in terms of, you know, inner life and, and life bursting forth and a lot of tension and, um, and it's just a lovely piece. And I can see definitely how you love, enjoy working with the oil and cold wax. It really shows up well in this piece for sure. Thank you. I will second that. It is a beautiful piece. Um, and it is really, I take it as, as that challenge that, that to, to get to that with the, with the red and green. Um, it is, it is amazing. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, no, wonderful. And we have, uh, looks like we have another comment in, in the chat. Um, <coughs> Philip, uh, who says, uh, you know, incredible movement uh, to the work, you know, fabulous energy. Um, which is which is very true, uh, Elsa. Your work has a lot of a lot of motion, a lot of feeling, a lot of oomph <laughs> to it. Awesome, great! Thank you so much for sharing. Next, uh, we've got a piece um, from Nicola to look at. Let's uh, let's pull that up. Awesome. So Nicola, please, please tell us about this, this very cool piece. Oops, muted. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess I missed the memo about choosing a piece. But anyways, I, I can talk about any of the pieces that are here. So I'll do my best. This is actually a very new piece. So it's, it's fun to talk about this. And I think this isn't a really interesting piece to talk about. Um, on top of Ellen talking about her piece, because actually I can see uh, quite a bit of um, similarity and some parallel of ideas and some laying of shapes on top of each other. Um, this is a way that I'm working right now with um, monotypes and gel plates and um, laying pieces of um, papers together. Now, this is not an assemblage. This is one big print that I've done. Um, and, um, yeah, I just, I've, I've, I like the rhythm. I, again, am very involved in music. In fact, tonight's my, my choir practice. So I had to make this great decision, but anyways, it's wonderful because I see the world through harmony and heart, you know, harmony of shapes and pieces coming together and all these sort of whisperings of ideas that are underneath these, um, you know, egg-like or flying, as I call them, flying saucer shapes that have come about. And I love the um, unexpected in art. And, it, you know, I, I, it's wonderful to be surprised and to be shocked and to learn through the process of creating what actually happens and then 
to realize what's happened and then to um, spend some time just in in that wonderful discovery of what's gone on. So I'm really enjoying working this way right now. And I probably will continue to work this way for a while. Um, it's uh, it's uh, it, it was unusual and what challenges me is not the process of creating this. It's how do you handle it afterwards? And so what I have been working on is paper and then mounting it onto board as opposed to working directly on board, which is what I would normally be doing when I'm working with oil. Um, and so this is working with acrylic and it's working with uh, gel monoprints and monoplates and um, all sorts of other objects that I can just place on to the print and run it off and, um, and see where it goes. So um, my palette's kind of wide open in, in this process. Um, I'm not confining myself to any sort of family of colors. I'm letting the colors interact and speak to each other. And um, sometimes I'll do something very unexpected and very unnatural of how I would go about. And I just love how, how it all turns out and what happens. Um, so, yeah, and I'm also loving the idea of, um, I know when I work on large pieces and large oil pieces, particularly, they are the piece and I'll have to work through the idea. And if I take a photo of that piece from start to finish, you might see six different individual paintings to get to the original painting. And then, as I say, it's sort of a conversation between myself and the painting as to when it's finished. Whereas these pieces, I can do six or eight of these and there might be one or two that resonates that I find successful. So I do love that. I love working quick. I love doing many sketches and drawings and paintings and then finding one absolutely magical one and finding magic in the spontaneous moment. So um, that is kind of a little bit about what's going on behind this process and this piece. That's great. Thank you so much. That sharing that journey of, of discovery. That was, that was great. And I love to hear that idea of what, how do you handle it after? Like, what do I do with it when it, when it's done? How, how do I care for it? How do I present it? That's, that's something uh, that I think as artists, you kind of intuitively sort of know I've done it on a canvas. I've done it on, on, on this surface, but to think about, you know, well, what, what does it really mean to, to have it presented in, in a way is, is pretty interesting. It's a pretty cool thing to think about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. And it's also, um, I think when you're used to doing paintings like Ellen and Elsa are and can relate to what I'm saying, it's a very different thing to present your art um, if it's on paper under glass. It's, it's just a wee bit removed. And uh, um, yeah, it's just a difficult way just difficult a little bit for me to do that. I like the work to be just right there, touchable, you know, and, and available. Yeah. I like, oh, can I say something? <laughs> I like, um, or it's interesting, the freedom that, that the monotype seems to give. And um, I don't know if it's the right word, but, but it is, um, I don't know. It seems like <laughs> there there is a freedom to it that 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 uh, very much come come out in 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 the image too. It's mm. beautiful. Thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> the the uh, the the flying saucers or the eggs. Um, are, you know, I mean, of course, art is always just a creation of happy accidents, but that's really just rolling my brayer, you know, picking up the paint on my brayer and running it um, along the plate. And it ended up in these wonderful shapes, which normally you would just keep braying and cover the whole, um, the whole surface in that. But I just couldn't give them up. I just went, no, I can't give those up. I've got to print those onto, onto the top somewhere. So yeah, it's great that I love that, that just that discovery. It's great. It's fun. And it's beautiful and so effective. It's a very evocative piece. Um, I love the organic um, elements in the top right corner. And then the colors um, 
somehow I'm drawn to because there is an element of that greenish reddish and it's inviting me to um, to be inspired by this to uh, introduce a few more colors in with the red and green. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. Say, when are you going <laughs> to, Elsa, what's your next step? Like, gosh. Right? <laughs> hmm. Yeah. And I love the lightness, the lightness of those. I, I want to, I'm going to call them orbs. Um, yes. They just have a, and then the, the faded ones that are, that are, that are in the background, not in the background, but they're, they're, I can't even speak. Um, Anyways, they're, they're sort of not as prominent and there's a really nice rhythm to the whole thing. And then the circles on the other side, they, they're, I, I just love this piece. It's beautiful. It, I could stare at it all day. Thank you so much. That's really, that's nice to hear. It's beautiful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not very familiar with monoprint. I've never seen it or done it. Would you explain a little bit what, what your process yeah. is? Yeah, I can. I can explain the process. I was actually always drawn to monoprint in school too, because I took printmaking, but I, I just don't like getting bogged down with the, with, with the technical aspect, aspect of art, it, it, you know, it was, ugh. and um, so I always just went, you know, ran and just did monoprints because I love them. They're just like doing paintings on the plate and then running it through. And in this, um, this particular um, process, it's a gel plate. So um, it's just so accessible. I mean, honestly, I would encourage you to just get out and try it because you'll love it. You'd probably, it's so addictive. And it's just, um, it's just a, a gel plate. You can get them in different sizes and you can, you know, you can just paint directly on the gel plate. You can um, run different shapes. You can, I, you know, I have a large, this is a larger piece of paper. So I'll run and my plate isn't as big as this. So I'll run four different prints at one time and then overlap those prints so that I don't have four separate squares oh. and somehow marry them, all those ideas together with another element, which is, you know, it's the, the eggs or the flying saucers or the orbs. And um, yeah, and it, it, you know, you can just keep printing and printing. And then what happens is you, um, you keep activating the residue that's on the plate. As mm -hmm. soon as you add more paint to it, because it's acrylic, it'll activate that, that paint and it will pick it up. And so you get these just lovely um, prints. I don't have one in the show, I don't think, but you get these lovely prints that are just, um, um, they just speak of surface, N no, no, no objectivity or no, um, um, you know, no relevance to anything else, but just surface and texture and they're, they're lovely. And that makes a great um, base to begin a print on actually too. So it's fun. And, you know, I, I actually had spent a couple of years ago, I spent time doing clay monoprints, which were, it was another really fun process. You know, these are all just processes that get created by people just goofing around really. And this was um, a ceramic artist who took the slip, the colored slip and added more pigment, powdered pigment to the slip. And you, you work on um, a leather dry um, piece of clay as your surface, your printing surface. And you again, build up, build up, build up um, surface on there. And then you can run prints and then just keep ap applying more colored um, slip to it. And this, um, this artist, um, honestly, I cannot remember his name. And he's unfortunately passed away. He's from Pennsylvania. He created large pieces, you know, in the eighties when corporations were buying huge pieces of art, he created large pieces and just built up built up all the pigment on this um, surface and ran prints. And then he started to run prints by just pulling the surface off. So he built the surface up and then for two years, just pulled prints by pulling sur the surface back down to the bottom. So it's so great because I'm all about layers. So it really speaks to me, all that and the history and what's underneath, you know, below the surface. Right, yeah, that's great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and Nicola, we've got a, a question uh, in, the, in the chat for you. Um, do you create a composition before you begin painting? Um, and if so, how do you go about it? 
No. <laughs> <laughs> easy answer. Very easy answer. No, I will just, uh, you know, I mean, as I say, there is nothing scarier than the empty blank canvas that's sitting in front of you. You just got to get at that. And it doesn't even matter what's on it, because as soon as something's on it, then you, well, for me, I'm speaking for myself. As soon as something's on it, then I have something to react to. And, um, and then once I react to that, there will be another reaction to that. And sometimes if I get completely stuck on a composition or a piece, I will do something radical, you know, like I, I don't, we don't have a picture of Bangkok, but Bangkok is one of the, the large oil and cold wax pieces there. And um, when I was working on that, that's a very, um, it's a dark piece, but it was, uh, it was the feeling that I had of walking through the rainy streets of Bangkok um, with the reflections going. And as I was doing that piece, I was just adding color and noise and movement and everything that would have been on the street in Bangkok at that time. And I just took a slash of red paint on my palette knife and just slashed it on because I needed to reactivate that painting to myself. And it was so provocative. It was like a slash of red lipstick. It, it just was, it just, for me, that was it. Then I could leave the piece alone because it had that, it was very suggestive and, you know, um, uh, just very, um, erotic in a way, you know, just this slash of red. Was it, was it a piece of violence? Was it, you know, sexual? What was it? It was, it, it just left me guessing and it added a, just a whole dimension to that piece. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, another comment from someone watching. Um, Margie Gilmore says, it's wonderful to hear what's been happening for these artists during the past few years of COVID and isolation. And it is wonderful to hear that you've all continued to work and, and haven't, uh, you know, been, been bogged down. We've all been bogged down. Let's, let's be real. Um, but the fact that you've all been continuing to work um, and, and having shows is, is great. It's impressive. It's, it's wonderful to, to see. And I think, you know, hopefully for people watching, it's, it's, it's inspiring, you know, to, to go out and keep at it, to keep working, to, to, to get it all, all out through whatever, whatever means you have in front of you. I don't think there's anybody that I know that hasn't been involved in the arts throughout COVID that hasn't thought of themselves as being incredibly lucky that they're an artist at this time. You know, I mean, it might, it might have uh, stopped a lot of exhibits. I do a lot of teaching, all that sort of thing, but I've had my art to carry me through. And, um, and I know a lot of other people that I know just feel blessed to have had that. Yeah, totally. Awesome. Well, that has been a wonderful conversation that we've all had. Um, so thank you, <laughs> Elsa, Ellen, and Nicola. That was, that was awesome. That was great to talk about art. I'm glad you all had questions and comments for each other. That was, that was lovely. And so. everyone watching, I hope you enjoyed. Um, in fact, I know you did. Um, <laughs> And so please uh, make sure to come on and check out this exhibition in person so you can experience uh, for yourself um, all of these ideas and emotions that these talented artists have put forth and, and interpret it yourself. Um, have that conversation uh, with the artwork. Um, oh, we just had one last little, um, I'm gonna pronounce your name wrong. I'm terribly sorry. Um, Huguet um, says that it was interesting and informative exclamation mark. Uh, so thank you for sharing your processes. Yeah, so everyone's everyone's pretty appreciative of this. So yeah, so check it out. Elements plus elements and abstractions at the Kameek Arts Center in West Vancouver. It is on until May 22nd. Uh, you can go and see it anytime Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And anytime you're at a show or a concert. So uh, go out and enjoy some live theater and some uh, wonderful art at the same time. Uh, so thank you again, Elsa Bluthner, Ellen Bang, and Nicola Morgan for sharing your artwork with us and for sharing, uh, sharing all of your thoughts and everything behind it. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> Nice to meet. <laughs> awesome. And uh, thank you to everyone uh, watching. Um, 
So I hope you all have a wonderful evening and we'll see you at the exhibition. <laughs>